another episode of the Stellar Sound Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to astronauts all the while rocking it and all the interdimension space traveling radars to empower creative musicians everywhere. I'm your host, Leonie Paulson, and today I am joined by Lena. But first, to become part of our interstellar presence, find us at StellarSoundPodcast.com on all social platforms at Stellar Sound Podcast or join our astronauts in the Stellar Sound Community Discord server. Links are in the description. Lena is a Finnish-born, York-based classical trained music producer and creator. Whether it is through her online courses or her LNA Does Audio Stuff channel, Lena has established herself as a lovable and open tutor to a community of young producers everywhere and has eradicated the fear of production softwares. Gaining traction through her social media and producing her own brand of honest electro-pop awkward dance music, it comes as no surprise that she was selected as one of Music Radar's music tech personalities of 2022. Lena, welcome to the Stella McGinnon and how are you today? I'm good, thank you. That was an introduction, bloody hell. <laughs> I it's love it. <laughs> every single time. I'm like, got to do this, I got it. And then it's a lot of words that we get there in the end. Yeah. Um, I just get yeah. to confirm that <laughs> my, my artist, yeah, my artist name is LNA. So I prefer also, you can call me LNA or because my real name is Lena. Hey. But there's a lot of confusion yeah. about this <laughs> I online. I can see people like... I mean, uh, they're searching someone called L E N A, and then they're like, like because people oh, think like that's Lina, my name, Lina, yeah. and then yeah, because my name is L I I N A. That's my 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 given name. <laughs> Person, given name, yeah, yeah. So if anyone's gonna like search you, it's not Lena. Do L N A, and then you will find it Just immediately LNA. on Spotify. Yeah, yeah L N A. <laughs> You're gonna get it. Uh, if you just google her she'll find her and put those three letters yeah. then do the I, ironically i, I yeah, thought I, lna was gonna be simple because i took the eyes off it's just <laughs> lena yeah. without the eyes but no. then it was actually more confusing <laughs> it's like a rubik's cube now okay you gotta like put some turns to find it no i <laughs> <laughs> like you screwed yourself up with the second. Yeah, oh, no, it's, a, it's maybe a unique one. I'll give you that. It's a, it's not one we hear every day. But I want to jump right into, I said before this interview, just I'm going to just delve into your personality. You just started your childhood and ended, you know, your thoughts on the afterlife or something like that. But I do want to start with your education because you are, uh, and I don't want to make this sound really pretentious or something, but you are very educated. <laughs> uh, you've been classically trained, <laughs> yes. severely educated. <laughs> no, um, you've been classically trained, um, and in your own words, you've always described your childhood and growing up as being surrounded by art and music. And then you went on to go and grab some degrees in music production and commercial music. And then, of course, what you're known for is being a certified Ableton instructor. Um, yeah. So the first question I want to get to, and I love asking this to teachers, no matter what subject or field or uh, I'm going to say level of teaching you're in, but what about teaching brings you such joy? Okay. So there was quite interesting things. You firstly, you say that I'm very educated. Firstly, I just want to punch into that, that <laughs> why I laughed was because I was never good at school. I failed all of my schools and I was never going to be an educated person. I was going to be an actress. Yeah. I was never going to go to any schools. So I'm very uh, dyslexic and very not neurodiverse. So that was never going to be my future. But then I was like, oh, no, I want to yeah. do it. <laughs> so and then I need to prove myself wrong it, that yeah. I can actually do it. Um, um, about teaching, um, it's a complicated thing to me, right? because I never wanted to be a teacher and I don't see myself as a teacher. So the fact that you call me a teacher is very weird for me because I don't see myself as a teacher. I'm an artist. Yeah, I'm an artist. Mm. <laughs> and, um, and the thing is that when I graduated from school, uh, well, when I graduated from my master's degree, which was in music production, um, I was, didn't have any money. I worked in a sex shop <laughs> and then I went from there to work in a gear for music <laughs> as a customer service <laughs> assistant. I worked in cafes and I, I worked in like, I've done every job there is in this world, literally. And I was just thinking like, how do I get money? And I was like, okay, I can teach. <laughs> and then it was just like a <laughs> snowball effect from there. But part of it was why I started music, produ uh, 
why I started YouTube channel and why I started、mm. to find a way to enjoy teaching a certain level was because I realized that there's no women really doing、yeah. that kind of content that I wanted to see in there. So, as a、mm. person who just graduated from music production university or、uh, York University doing music production and master's level, I kind of realized that. I can do that. Like I can explain what is a compressor in a very complicated, detailed way, but in a simplified matter. Because I'm dyslexic and because I'm neurodiverse, I always ask the questions: Why? 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 So, yeah. So everything needs to be super clear in my head,、uh, so that I can understand anything. I need to really、so、know you- it like super well. Yeah. I. I. So, well, I need to so that I can learn. I need to know why. I need to know that. The physics. I need to know the science. What, how, science, how sound works. But I don't understand how anyone else can understand it without knowing that. Like <laughs> in my head, I just don't understand how someone can understand how to use compressor if you don't know how signal works. So how, what is volume? What is、mm. how? Like I like what is all that? Like <laughs> so in my head, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> so your question was how. What do I enjoy the most about teaching? I think because I don't see my, I don't identify myself as a teacher. Um, and if I ask <laughs> that question, is a bit deep. I would say loaded, <laughs> but I would say the yeah, it's loaded. But I would say that it's what I enjoy the most is the fact that I can be the person that I wished I had to teach me. I can be that person to、That's、other people.、One. And I've, you know, I feel like every single time I get a message from、uh, somebody who, like, young girl, or somebody who's felt isolated and felt alone, or someone who never found a teacher who could make them understand things, whatever gender you are, like, every time someone sends that message to me, and they felt like. Isolated in this world, one way or another, and I can make them feel comfortable, and I can make audio feel accessible for those people. That is what I enjoy. So yeah, in the beginning it was to earn money, but then it turned into this online community of patrons, and it turned into a community of followers who got something out of of me just being、yeah. myself, and. That is something that has is like、great. completely turned my way of thinking about only our communities and also myself. Like, like I learned so much about myself through it.、Um, so, long story short, <laughs> I think it's that that's like in, being able to be that person to others. That is what I enjoy the most about it. I love that explanation. That actually is a, a very, uh, uh, I want to say, very positive. Not a not positive. It's a very motivational way to look at things.、Um, and I like asking this. I'm not going to call them your students. Let's call them your followers because they do follow you、mm. um, everywhere. It seems.、Um, <laughs> but one thing, what is what is <laughs> what it sounds very stalky.、Uh, have, is, has there been a moment that one of your followers has reached out? Or spoken to you,、um, and that you've learned something from them. Hundred percent. I feel like just being on my Discord、um, is. I learn something all the time. But you know what? I think the biggest thing this community has showed me is that I've had a lot of、um, apprehension towards、um, audio community. I never felt like I belonged、yeah. in it. I felt like there's this one demographic of people, which is usually older white men, <laughs> who I can't relate to,、yeah. and I feel I very. Like, just say, just say it. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's something that I felt really isolated away from, and I didn't feel welcomed, and I didn't feel respected or heard or like. And this is why I avoid going to audio spaces, big studios.、Um, I've limited myself from a lot of opportunities in audio industry because I, I'm a, I, I'm sick of being underestimated.
because also I mm. I am myself. So which means that I am girly. I giggle. I laugh. I look girly, and I freaking love being a woman. I like looking. <laughs> like myself and I'd love being myself and I love embracing femininity and I'm not going to reduce myself to be anything which I have done in the past. I shaved my head and I felt like a lot more masculine, which made me feel like people listen to me more, but I've kind of now in a point where what coming back to this is discord and this community has showed me that this is also the space that these men need. Like my space mm. is something that where men can become vulnerable and they can feel vulnerable and they can feel emotions and insecurities and they need it as much as anyone needs it. And it's mm. found, I've learned to not to be scared or not to, okay, not be scared. I don't want to use that word. I'm learned to not to isolate myself just because other people might make me feel things. I've learned that I'm proud who I am and I know what I know and I know I can believe in my skills. And if someone underestimates me in the future, it's their problem and it's not my problem. And they can, they can, they can go away from the space and I don't go away from the space. If they f speak rudely or they make me feel unwelcomed, then that's not my issue it's their issue and Problem. they can leave <laughs> yeah and this is something <laughs> i learned from my followers i learned it i actually learned this and i felt i i learned being welcomed as i am and i accepted as i am and listened and seen as i am and i don't need to be anything else than i am just because my followers are made me feel so just that they just like like me as i Same am bit. so i don't need to be anything else so I've learned a lot, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> That's amazing to hear. That, um, it's like a, I don't want to call it a safe space. It's such a typical word to use, but it's like a safe space. It's, it for you is to express a safe yourself space. And then to yeah. help your, yeah. I and and it. it's, it's, if, a, if, it's, if, it's if good it's, to hear it. <laughs> if it's a safe space for me to be myself, then I want it to be a safe space to anyone to be as they are. Whatever your background is, whoever you are, from whatever mm. culture, whatever uh, gender, whatever race, whatever, wherever you are, I want it to be a place where you can be yourself and you can be vulnerable and you can be, um, in, you can show your insecurities with full sympathy and uh, like understanding from the community and i think yeah. that is one of the most yeah. powerful things that i've learned mm. yes <laughs> i want to say amen there, there, there doesn't need to be that there sentence. doesn't need to be and also that there doesn't need to be separation i've separated myself away from all opportunities because i felt i felt like i need to separate myself because i was so sick of mm. feeling all these things and yeah i do still feel those threats and I feel like there is barriers absolutely but also um what more you are between with people who are freaking amazing the more you understand that most people are nice like most people in the world yeah. are nice it's just that the the shit ones are just very loud <laughs> oh, louder than the non-shit ones right yes but a lot but, of it, you, you got the this accepting, this, uh, I want to say not accepting, but this acceptance of yourself. I even loved it during your um, 12 days of creativity at the very end when you were showcasing the songs. I think you started off the stream with, you people need to stop apologizing <laughs> or something something like that because everyone keeps apologizing. Like, no, this is mm -hmm. this is the place where you get to make mistakes, get to express, yep. and then if you don't like it, da, da, da. it was like, I was like, yes, thank you. This is, <laughs> you don't hear creators do that every day. So I just want to give you mm -hmm. kudos for that, man. It's thank nice you. to see that. I, I think oh. that's a um, big part of what I, I believe in is that I – Honestly, I feel like in music production, we never see people making mistakes online. We don't never see uh, unfinished work. We don't see people learning. We just see finished radio yeah. quality stuff. We never see anyone learning. We don't ever Perfect see stuff. anyone saying that I have no idea how compressor works or how does it sound even. What, like, how does, how do you yeah. learn to 
listen to compressor or whatever we don't we don't hear that and i'm like you know what this is me i'm learning i've done this almost 10 years now but i'm still learning and i also know this mm. is my level now and i know i can do good quality but also i didn't always know this five years ago i didn't know any of this <laughs> like <laughs> you know it's a journey it's I, a learning i also process. had to learn something yeah gotta start somewhere but uh, it's good to see mm -hmm. It's good to see a little bit of positivity on online forums where it's usually just a, I don't want to say a cesspool, but it's like a cesspool of hate. So when we find communities such as yours, it's just like a, it's a very breath of fresh air. Like, ah, there is beauty in the mm. world <laughs> uh, situation. Yeah. It's really great to see. Thank you. And I also, uh, I do say that my Patreon is like, I, I tell people that there is unsolicited advice is one of the biggest things in audio communities that brings so much hate it's like if nobody yeah. asks for feedback don't give it just don't just don't, <laughs> don't just if you have nothing good to say like only <laughs> only advice you can give unsolicited is like praise and compliments but, okay but if someone i want to move on to a, a smaller section called the uh stalin sound goes and stalks our guest section um what we basically do is uh, the host, which is I, goes and serves the web and tr tries to find like all your Instagram and TikToks and old Facebook posts. And then if there's some interesting ones we'd like to show it to our uh, uh, viewers slash listeners. <laughs> oh, no. But just for all the astronauts listening, <laughs> please head on over to our YouTube page or Discord server to have a look with us. So what I'm going to attempt is, we talked about this, I'm going to attempt to share my screen or some photos and then we'll head on over for some videos and then what i want to do is if you remember the photo give us some context what is happening why is it happening who's it happening you know yes. the drill um, okay tell us what is <laughs> happening in this picture it's a cute um, one i'll give you that <laughs> thank you 2010 uh i graduated from my i was 19 so I graduated oh, wow. from school in Finland and it's like every every country has a different but when we're 19 we get that hat and it's like a graduation hat yeah. and it's uh, it's like uh, basically a bit like our high school it's it's yeah it's when you're 19 ah. the school from 16 to 19 <laughs> and that's where ah, I graduated okay, from yeah, yeah 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 and uh, so that was my final day of school and I'm very small and I have braces on and I'm missing a tooth. And <laughs> and on the right, I am uh, 10 years later, 29. And that was, I think the first year I was doing YouTube. And I was, I, uh, that is one year after I graduated from music production uh, masters and I'm living my best life. And I think that time I was also teaching at the music, um, the Leeds Conservatoire as a music production lecturer. I think that was the year. So that's like a full, yeah. uh, I want to say, a little look at the past and the present you, which is, it's, there's <laughs> a difference, hey? You can just see a whole new, oh, a whole new hue. Okay, oh, this one <laughs> I love. Uh, I'm going to find you. There you are, I think. Yes, that's From me. From the hair, I think. That, yeah, that's that is you. Me. And this is... <laughs> A dance company, as far as I understand. Okay, so that is called Tin Arts Dance Company. And I've actually been so lucky to be able to work with them with them over three years now on row in three or four different projects. So currently I'm working on another project with them and they are an amazing dance company mm. up north um, in Durham. And they work with dancers, professional dancers who all have disabilities. So currently, uh, mm -hmm. this one is from a dance performance called Helm. And we were touring around UK and then COVID happened and the tour needed to end. But I'm there with a fuzzy, uh, no. fuzzy Johnson, who, uh, Johnson, fuzzy, oh my God, what's her no last name? Johns, John, Johns. <laughs> Ah, fuzzy yeah fuzzy is an amazing Charles. singer songwriter and she's absolutely amazing musician and we composed this amazing uh interactive kind of uh, piece for the dancers to dance into and we were on the stage with them and i had a lot of electronic gear and then we had some 
that's this one is uh, a rock piece, I think. So I have electric guitar in that one. And it looks awesome. And currently, I'm doing interactive <laughs> sound design for them with a dancer called George, and it's it's awesome. Uh, I I they give me so much freedom to explore new tech and all this kind of thing. So. I'm, I absolutely love this job to work with them. Something to look forward to into the future um, for everyone that's in your area, I bet. Um, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I have so oh many questions. God. Why are you in a wooden box? <laughs> like, what is happening? Uh, that was in a, like a, I think it was a green party political, some kind of like um, a garden party. Card, green garden party basically mm -hmm. uh, in Scotland I used to live in Scotland of about five years uh, before I moved to England and I did this whole this was this was before I was a music producer so this oh, this was a time that I was introduced to music production but I was a singer songwriter all my songs were with a guitar and just I used to busk most of my money so uh when yeah. i was in scotland so i used to play on the streets and with the guitar and um and and then i used to do these little gigs like this one so i played in bars and little parties and stuff just me oh, and a guitar it's really cool <laughs> it's uh it's very um stylized so i'll give it that Ja muistan äitini kädet kannattelemassa minun vatsani alapuolella. Do you know this video? Do you recognize it? Yes, I do. And this one actually still gets me a little bit. It makes me a little bit cry because this is from my mom's art gallery. Oh. And uh, my mom oh. is on the back here. And I think in a bit over midway of this song, uh, you can see my mom mm -hmm. start to cry because there's an audience in front of me in that video. And uh, my the audience started to cry because the song is about uh, like leaving home and finding your own feet. In an, and I talk about going into another country and, mm -hmm. you know, finding your own life. And then the people in front of me started to cry. And then my mom, no, my mom started to cry because of the lyrics on the back of me. And then I could see that the people on my, in front of me started to cry because they see my mom crying. And then the, the lyrics, yeah. and it's about generational, like, um, my, my uh, grandparents were super religious and they always like told prayers and stuff. And I, I kind of talk about that, how, you know, your, mm you're kind of leaving home and you're continuing this generational journey and all this. And yeah, yeah, it was just very emotional. And in that video, you can see my mom just like welling up and yeah, it's in her art gallery, oh. in, uh, my hometown as in Nandali in Finland. I'm going to talk a lot about your online personality. Now I think everything revolves around that because that is who you are. You are an online personality and you've had, you have, you have a personal website, you have vlogs, you have vlogs, you have a book, you have your YouTube channel, uh, you have very in extensive Instagram and TikTok pages. Like you are pretty much online everywhere constantly, which um, yeah. it's, it's part of the job. But you have a video uh, where you talk about online trolling and haters, and which is a big part of what you do. And we've spoken about your very acceptive and very positive Discord community. But mm -hmm. how do you manage to scroll past those comments or those <laughs> trolls and just not submit to them? Um, <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Do I? Do I? No. Um, I would say that, um, okay, when I'm very tired and stressed, they do get to me like just before Christmas, 12 days of creativity was absolutely success. It was amazing experience. I enjoyed it and it seemed to really work for people as well. Thank you. Like I really enjoyed that experience and I could see that people enjoyed it. But uh, just that at the end of it, um, I got two comments that were extremely brutal and very harmful for me <laughs> and they really got <laughs> to me and and that was the point where, because I was just so tired of 
YouTube. I was so tired of doing 12 days of creativity because I was literally posting almost every day. I worked so hard. I was working literally like every night till like 8, 8, 9 p.m. Like every day pushing and then doing the TikToks, doing da da da, da advertisement. And then you on the top of it, you get a couple people. Like it was literally two comments, even though there was like hundreds of positive comments and hundreds of amazing comments. But those two comments just got me and they do get me. So that's my point. They sometimes, when I'm vulnerable, when I'm tired mm. and I'm insecure because I'm just so tired and I'm, I was stressed and I needed a holiday. So now I, I was in a holiday almost three weeks. I came back. I deleted those comments and I was just like, you know what? I felt good again and all this, but (laughs) yeah, but I would say also is I've learned that, you know, I started, I, I, I would say I would feel very different if I started YouTube when I was early twenties, I could Mm. not have done it. I could not have handled it. I, I go to therapy, um, once a month and it's not to solve a problem. It's not to solve an issue. It's a maintenance. The same way that I go to hairdressers. Yeah. The same way that I go to a dentist. <laughs> the same way I go to therapy. And it's not the fact that I go there with an issue that I've been thinking about. Sometimes I, I feel absolutely fine. I have nothing to talk about. And I go there and we just chat. And sometimes something comes up and I mm. want to talk about more. And I notice that something's actually been bothering me and it's made me a lot healthier um it made me to realize what youtube is doing for me and what i can do it for it um so alongside therapy i also have the best husband ever who is my literally my best friend and we are he's also self-employed and he goes through comments and feedback as well and we both just are there for each other and i think you know i also grew up with the artist mother so i've seen it what it does but then also i see the positive i see that it's not about you it's about them and it's okay as well if it hurts but it should never stop you to do what you want to do so the thing is that you Mm. need to find communities you need to find friends you need to find people around you who accept that sometimes you feel shit and also that you feel shit yeah. sometimes and you need to accept that and then go to therapy because I can't recommend like, but obviously find the right therapist because it took, I, sh- I shopped a therapist go for a therapy. long time, but honestly, I cannot yeah. recommend it more <clears throat> to people like even once a month or even like once a half a year, just go to check just the same way that for dentists just for checkup yeah <laughs> and it's, a, it's just, exactly and also, what you say it's a checkup it's a metal checkup exactly like it's like checking yeah. it's your check it's, i call it if you go to the take your car for a service you've got to take your mental car for a service yeah. as well every now and, and again sometimes it's not yeah and sometimes not even about mental health sometimes it's about paying for somebody just that it's about me for an hour that it's about i can mm. talk about myself up to somebody not feeling shit about being selfish like i can just talk about whatever i want and about myself and feel noticed and feel validated and feel like my emotions mm. matter and then after that i don't need to ask that mm. from other people that much i don't need to be needy exactly. i don't need to be asking for validation from fans or followers or my mother or <laughs> i don't need to like i can actually just like feel better about the fact that someone noticed me for an hour and then I can be, because also this is something, it's a taboo that we feel like we're not allowed to feel noticed. Like we all want to feel noticed. And yeah. Seen. We all want to that. And that is healthy and it's normal. And, and it's just also as an artist, your if you are excited about your art, you want to share, you want to, you want to get validated. But also you need to learn that mm. not everybody cares. No, but to be honest, many people don't care what you do. And that's also a fact and it's just kind of okay. So you need to really trust just yourself and be like, 
I'm in a good place. I like this song. I like my art. Um, and I believe there's some people out there who might also like it. And that's it. You know, <laughs> that's it. But then uh, you also, you, you touched on it um, with the stress and the tired, being tired because of mm-hmm. your workload, for example, during your 12, uh, 12 days of Christmas. And I want to ask you about that because self-care and um, self-care and time management is a big thing amongst artists, but also really amongst online creators and a bunch of like really big um YouTubers are starting to speak out about it, about taking time back, sit, taking time for themselves and trying not to burn out because that is essentially what they did in their early careers. Um, yeah. And I think you also touched on it a little bit um, in your video. Uh, I need to stop. That's the video title's name. Oh, I remember it. Uh, you talk about being yeah. a YouTuber, being consistent, uh, trying to do quantity over quality but then also that makes you feel bad and then you do the quantity instead Mm -hmm. of quality and you start burning out um what tools have you except for therapy what tools do you employ (laughs) to not burn out because it's such a reality eh? yeah absolutely and just kind of like say i don't regret it i don't regret doing quality uh, quantity over quality for a long time mm. that was three and a half years of my life do, posting once a week um i don't yeah, regret it insane. because it, it gave me my career so it t- taught me so much of music production i learned to be a better teacher eh, mm. teacher educator someone who educates <laughs> other people on certain to- topics <laughs> Uh, again, by the way, I have nothing against teachers. It's just something that I don't identify myself as. So that's why I tweet. The forbidden um, word. The I, word that yeah, shall not be I, named. I love, I love <laughs> teachers. Don't worry you about it. You, it's almost like all these things are small tools that you use to motivate you to keep going. And it's not about the actual... You're not, this, you're not regretful of the, quali- the yeah. quantity or the amount that you've worked. Because it's given you the quality that you have now. And for me, it's more about self-knowledge because it's not, I'm not lacking motivation. <laughs> I'm like, I, my issue is that yeah. I have too much motivation and too many ideas. And <laughs> I, my issue is that I'm a workaholic. So I'm not someone who lacks, um, lacks like work, work amount. Like I work. Yeah. I don't lack drive. I have too much of it, which consumes me. So my problem is that I'm constantly trying to prove a point and understanding why why do I work the way I do? Why do I do these things I do? That's the key of realizing how to manage it all. Because I understood that I'm a, I'm a person who constantly takes on too much. I constantly want to do more because I get so excited and I love what I do. I'm mm. so lucky to be able to do what I do as my job. But at the same time, I need to also realize that with that comes the fact that I need to take care of myself and have a life, have hobbies. So I take it mm. on hobbies that mm. I don't share on YouTube. I don't share on social media. I actually have a life that I don't share on social media at all. What? And, <laughs> yeah. Imagine Funny. I do things. I have, I have things that people don't know anything about. And that's taken yeah. like setting up borders, setting up uh, ways to like, Social media is work. It's a work for me. Mm. Mm. As much as I'm authentic there, I only show the parts I want to be authentic about. So I'm still censoring yeah. myself, even though I am authentic and by myself. Because if I would give all of myself, I would consume myself. I would to way, way too exposed. And nobody can handle that. So I think it's about time management, calendars, plans all this literally it's all <laughs> it's all in my book <laughs> i'm gonna sell it's that. Gonna, buy the book find the secrets basically so the secret all your it's secrets a, will be revealed <laughs> yeah exactly that's the summary of that answer <laughs> oh like that's a good one to the segment called behold the meteor shower this segment is a set of rapid fire questions that you will have to answer with the first answer that comes to mind and i'm going to ask you are you ready i hope 
Yes, I am ready. I promise being short okay. and concise. <laughs> if I can. Okay. If you could be an instrument, which would you be? Push two. <laughs> okay, that's a first. Uh, if, uh, uh, I was like, they're not expect that, but let's go on with it. Let's roll with this. I love push two. I would um, totally be push two. I have a, even a lot of reasons why that, I would be push two. Anyway. <laughs> okay, give me a, give me a reason. No, I, I want to hear the reasons now because you can't just say that and not. I got what are the reasons? <laughs> because able to live is uh, it's a physical controller for able to live, and able to live has literally limitless amount of options, and it has constantly ideas and stuff. I literally like it's literally like my brain. <laughs> I feel so. I'm <laughs> pushing. <laughs> uh, that's applicable, I think. Uh, Best plugin ever ever created. Best. Did you say best plugin? plugin. Yeah, best plugin. Uh, it <laughs> must be Baby Audio uh, Comeback Kid. Okay, best delay. okay, makes sense. Makes Freaking love it. it just yeah. makes everything sound good. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, it makes everything sound so smooth for some reason. Um, it does. What was the last song you listened to? What was the last song you listened to? My own <laughs> that I'm mixing right now. My next single. <laughs> <laughs> that it comes out in an February. An oh, let's just plug that right there. February release. Watch Spotify. Thank you. And YouTube. And yep. you will find Elena's new single. Thank you very much. Uh, yep. Which uh, which movie has the best soundtrack? Mm, oh, that's difficult. That's a tough one. Ooh. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. This... Well, mm. I must, like, I, I think there's so many, but something, the first one that came to me was because I had the CD when I was, like, 12. Uh, I actually had got the CD as a Christmas present, was, uh, um, Last, last, they no, where is it? This is Halloween, this is Halloween. Oh, um, the night before Christmas, night before Christmas, yeah, Danny Elfman. Um, I, I just, I think Danny Elfman is great, just but that somehow that came to my he mind is. because I knew all this, I literally memorized the whole, whole, all the songs out of it. Yeah, there's like a... that was <laughs> that was a long time a ago, but great soundtrack. It's good, I mean, though. it sticks. Um, uh, which Harry Potter house would you belong to? Oh, I tested it. I, I, I am, um, you did, huh? You did. What is I'm it? so glad you did. I, I praise people, of course. I praise people who do their, their Harry Potter sortings. So you, yeah, I'm just trying to think it's what it's life in skill English. That you Sorry. Need. I'm just gonna Google quickly what is in English. <laughs> You have the Finnish name for it. <laughs> I I think I mix them up always in English. Gryffindor. I am Gryffindor. Yeah. Ah, uh, Gryffindor. Okay. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. Best musical advice ever given to you? That would be Olga Fitzroy, <laughs> who said that... Uh, what did she say? She said that... Because we are asking like about favorite plugins and favorite techniques and she said it doesn't really matter um that if whatever just sounds good and actually and she's like such a known mixing engineer and she just literally said that literally math doesn't matter what you use doesn't matter how much it is doesn't matter if you know exactly how it works doesn't matter if da, 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 if and if if it sounds good it sounds good and if you use it, you're a yeah. mixing engineer. And that's how it is. It's like, if, if it sounds good, it's, it sounds good. That's solid advice. Trust I'll your ears. That. Which music, trust your ears. What a good one. Yeah. Um, which musical artist should we all be listening to right now? And you can't say yourself. It doesn't count. Uh, which musical <laughs> artist should we all be listening to right now? <laughs> mm. Um, 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 um. There's so many, there's so many. Um, well, one person that I've been using as a, I love their Spotify for just like when I work, and who I actually interviewed in, on my pot uh, on my 
website, uh, no, YouTube, uh, Jokodo Sounds. <laughs> if you like lo-fi. Oh, yeah. Okay. Lo-fi, yeah. um, especially for like when I'm working and stuff, I love listening to his stuff. And we were actually colleagues when we worked together at Leeds Conservatoire. So I met, I met oh, him there. That's great too. But he, very that's pretty really and cool. stuff and very li- relaxing tracks. <laughs> Very relaxing tracks. So his stuff is really good. I, I can. I'll say. I'll second that answer. Okay, this is where I'm going to speak a lot of Finnish, or I'm going to just speak one Finnish word, but I'm going to really try. Please do. What do you prefer? <laughs> what do you prefer, Mikey Roca or Haggis? If you had to choose, gun to your head. I'll try the word again. Say the first Mikey one Roca first. Or Mikey I have no idea what... Roca. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like just go, uh, uh, um, copy it into the chat, eh? Because uh, I know I'm. Yeah, sorry, I, I don't know. You living. said that you even practice pronouncing it. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I've like tried, but you know, Miku they don't trust my what Finnish. Is, I don't know what that is. What is mm-hmm. mukirokka? <gasps> I think it's some type of like blood pudding or blood soup or something. Ah, uh-huh, but it's from a different Haggis, area of it, Finland. I. Yeah, it's different area of Finland, so Damn I it. don't know that one. Um, oh, I man. am a vegeta- I'm I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat both. Okay, <laughs> so, well then, one. safe neither. <laughs> oh, neither. I was thought I was going to catch you on this. Neither. I'm a vegetarian, <laughs> and I'm from a different like area. No. Okay, this is the, oh, the last question of the rapid yeah. fire. Yeah, pescatarian. I'm okay. So I'm not, I don't want to say same, but you know, same. Um, this uh, this question is is the one that usually gets our guests. So I'm gonna say sorry, but you're only allowed to choose one best okay. song of all time. I, but I apologize, but this is part you of know, the torture that is SSP. <laughs> do you know, like, you have these moments where you are listening to something and you're like this is the best song ever and then when someone asks mm. you this question and then you're like i have no idea <laughs> you have no answer can't, i've never I can't remember to day in my life <laughs> yeah i can't remember no. anything um oh my god i literally like planking um i'm this trying to Halloween see my spotify list. Danny Elfman. <laughs> most listened to or something like that Just, yeah just a moment. Oh yeah, that is good. Um, I wouldn't. You got one. I don't know if it's best of all time, but something that I have listened to a lot recently. That I think that that's the best way. Um, it's from an album called Valitu Kansa from Antti Tuisku. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a Finnish artist called Antti Tuisku. I'm gonna write mm-hmm. it in the chat. Yeah, then I can post it uh, and, in the in this one. And it's Vali Tukanza is the album and it's um it's the Kahvia ja Pulla. Kahvia ja Pulla, that's my favorite song for a long time. I listened last last Ooh. Christmas, not this Christmas, but the Christmas Christmas before me and my mom were listening on repeat uh, <laughs> when I was visiting and we listened to the lyrics and the lyrics are the most impactful lyrics I've listened and the most clever written lyricism mm, mm. Uh, I have ever heard probably. And the album is also produced by Jurek, which is a Finnish producer. And the production is so clever. Like just, you know, like when you see something mm. that is just the clever, like it's just so like, like unexpected, but it just all works so well. So that album, uh, yeah. Ka- the- one of your product- or not in one of your production videos, um, you, in one of your videos, you traveled to a production a symposium forum, uh, get together, I want to say, and it was a bunch of, uh, women, women producers, um, and you had two questions for them in this video, and I want to throw those questions back at you. And your questions yeah. to these women in production were: What is your favorite piece of gear, and why music production? So, Alane, why music what production? Is your favorite piece of gear, and why yeah. music production? Yeah. 
Did I ask why music production? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. No okay. idea. Uh, and they had, they had interesting answers. I'll give you that. They were like, because I had nothing else to do or there was a, a easy transition from writing my music to music production. Oh, that just is made a fun sense. question. Oh, I uh, remember that. That's like, that was one of the first videos I ever done. So that's like almost over four okay. years ago. Yeah. Um, okay. So... <laughs> My favorite piece of gear right now. Oh, my new Genelec monitors. 100%. Ooh. Oh, gorgeous. They changed my game so much. Like the way I listen to music, the way I mix, the way I make music, honestly, the way I produce. Uh, it's just, I never understood what's the difference between expensive monitors and like regular <laughs> budget ones until I put these until on. Until you got them. And I was like, I was like, whoa, whoa. So they're my definitely ba favorite piece of gear right now. It's having a listening space that up my game so much. And it's incredible mm. how big difference it is. So that is, and why music production? Do you know what? I've asked myself that question, like, why did I pick to be a music producer? I asked that question many times. Yeah. and Because I always say that, do, do I feel like it's my passion? I don't know. I feel that projects are my passion. Music production is so much fun. And I find it... It's tricky because I grew up in a family of artists. So obviously self-expression and art has always been a massive part of my life. So I feel like fine arts was already taken. <laughs> I don't know. Fine arts was like, that was me, my, my mom and my brother. And then acting, acting was always a massive part of me, but I never felt like, I don't know, there was something about it that was never fully fitting. And then I never wanted to be mm -hmm. a musician. I did music all my life since I was five. Um, but I was never going to be a musician. So then I feel like acting, mm. music, art all comes together in my career right now doing youtube filming editing doing graphics um but also i never knew when i was a young kid that i'm a nerd and that is what i i'm very passionate nerd about everything i love details <laughs> i love science i love physics like the audio physics it's just so exciting and then I feel like all this combines into my self-expression, which is making music, making songs through music production and sharing them in videos, like telling stories with music videos and uh, then sharing that process in tutorials. And I think that's why music production, because I'm a big nerd. <laughs> Makes it. I mean, if that's a summary of it, that's a good summary of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I'm a big nerd. But yeah, I am into music production because I'm a gigantic nerd, <laughs> which makes sense. Yeah. If you look at it. It's a lot of. It is a lot of science and everything. Um, but I feel like that's your the passion thing was yeah? like that. I I feel like the passion is like everything. Like I'm just so passionate in yeah. so many ways. But this is like the way that I feel the most natural way of creativity coming out of me is through music production and nerding oh, such up. Such a good answer. Such a good <laughs> run and answer. Um, you are a certified Ableton instructor, tutor. Um, and I want to know, you've obviously worked with a lot of softwares across many years, but mm -hmm. what, why gravitate towards Ableton instead of something like... Pro Tools or Logic, what 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 sets Ableton apart to you than the others? If anyone who do you use Ableton? No, I use Pro Tools. Okay, you wouldn't ask that question <laughs> if you use, if if you use if you would use Ableton, you wouldn't ask that question. And I would say that that's yeah, that's probably. the answer <laughs> because anyone who asks this question or asks which is the best door, they don't use Ableton. <laughs> I anyone yeah. who uses Ableton <laughs> Live and it it's knows that it changes your completely the way that you look at audio, creativity, workflows, the possibilities, everything that you do. 
Um, I used to teach Pro Tools and Logic in a university. So I didn't teach Mm. Ableton there or Ableton Live. That's the actual. um, But I was wearing actually Ableton (laughs) hoodie. I was wearing a hoodie that said Ableton where while I was teaching Pro Tools and Logic. (laughs) Um, um, This this is manifesting. (laughs) No, it was just really funny. Um, Because they knew that I'm an Ableton Live person. But I would say that the what it's why it's different is because the options are limitless like literally you can do anything you want with it and it's so flexible and it actually imitates a human workflow not a machine not a music Mm. studio workflow not tape workflow which pro tools and logic uh, follows is how tapes used to work but able to live hmm. is design how human brain works which is not linear okay humans don't think from zero to three they think ideas ideas and then we need to start taking the ideas together and then put that into an idea and that's what able to live does the best is like being a machine for creativity but also literally anything you want to do in audio you can do because of maxwell live because it's connected to coding language and you can literally do whatever you want with it that's why i like it. <laughs> okay that's a that's a fair fair stance that uh i haven't even touched on ableton ever i haven't even looked into it um except when when i went through your videos because i was like the first time i've actually seen how ableton works and i thought Ooh. maybe it might be a, a, a little exploration did i did project, i pique your interest uh, in, so. You might have, but like I also don't <laughs> use Pro Tools to its full extent, so I can't really give a proper opinion on this matter. But I was like, ah, it looks a bit easier but in some ways. I, I also <laughs> must say that every DAW has their own, uh, like, strengths. Pros and cons. So Pro Tools, Pro Tools example is extremely amazing if you have a lot of data, like you're doing sound for film example, and you have so much data that needs to transfer. Pro Tools is best for that. Uh, whereas mm. CPU usage in Ableton Live, a lot of data can be then a bit problematic. Whereas Logic is amazing for singer-songwriters who don't want to create their own productions or something and they want to put on ideas or something. And it's so, that's mm. the strongest thing that Pro Tools is really good for. It's very accessible for singer-songwriters, example. But uh, no, Logic, sorry. Lo- Logic is really good for that. Uh, whereas Ableton Live is for creative hub that's what I think it's like for creativity and confidence okay. and to enhance your creativity uh, and live performance and like the fluid fluidity of workflow. That's what uh, for a modern, modern music producer, I find it best for that. And that's why I feel like if it's me the best, because that's what I do. <laughs> if I would be a sound designer hmm. for ma- major films or something, I might want to, uh, or a sound editor. Yeah, Go sound editor tools. for, yeah, sound uh, design for films. I would still use pro, uh, Logic. And now, oh my God, able to live. Uh, but if <laughs> if <laughs> but if I would do sound editing, I would use Pro Tools, and so on. So yeah, okay, I make, wouldn't say that. that. Yeah, it makes complete sense. Yeah. No, if you put it that way, it does make complete sense. Um, I want to pivot a bit towards women in the music industry and specifically production because you do have a very strong opinion on that or stance and you do uh, really uh, speak out about uh, uh, the woman in production being a great thing and not something to shy away from. Um, And in your documentary, In Control, A Journey into Music Production, you give this really shocking statistic. And I was like, what? That can be real. And when I Googled it, it's real. 2% of all music producers are women. That is shocking. It probably has changed It's actually now 2.6. Okay, we've gone gone up (laughs) 0.6. 6%. 6, 6, 2.6, yeah. 2.6%. That's completely shocking. And yet, if we look at social media, not in the bigger industry but let's say on the online forums we do see a rise of femme creators so i want to if you think about the this next generation of music or the future of music do you think the music industry is going to become more female is this the generation of the femme okay so music production and audio was actually originally more women 
than it was men. So we have been in an industry before that was more. It was originally women, like coders and stuff, were mostly women at the beginning. Okay. Same was audio people. So it was actually originally uh, in the 1940s, 50s that was mostly women doing it. So, example, Doctor Who, like uh, uh, the the the. the Tune music is uh, written by a woman. So, example, there's so, so much like history behind women in audio, which yeah. is also not taught and not teach. So, we need to like go back there and kind of look at it. Is that actually yeah. it does exist? No idea and, that was the thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, no there's idea. a lot of amazing pioneers who's been in the industry for years. So we are not the first ones <laughs> to kind of to put it that way. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, so it is changing, absolutely. But what there is, uh, is still the glass ceiling. And what that means is that a lot of women, like myself, I'm a very good example of this, what I'm going to say, um, is we we are grown into the world where <sighs> we are constantly need to exceed our own ex expectations, everybody else's expectations, and we are constantly fighting. The audio space is not made for us to enter. So we don't come to the space to be just producers. We come there to be female producers. We come there to fight our way. We come there to take space. We constantly are on our edge to protect ourselves and protect our space and protect our presence in the space. So it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of a space from learning actually do the job because imagine if we come to a space where we don't need to fight and we instantly feel secure and we instantly mm. feel accepted and like we don't need to protect ourselves and have walls to constantly feel like do not underestimate me do not make me feel like less than you do not explain things do not da -da 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 -da. and if we come to a space and we made straight away feel comfortable and that we are equal and we're exactly like everybody else then we can focus 100% on the actual what we are there to do. Then gender doesn't matter. Mm. And gender shouldn't matter. Yeah. Absolutely. But it still does. And even if it's not it still does. every woman or every woman might not feel this way. Absolutely. Because example, um, you said femme producers, which is very fascinating that mm. I do feel that uh, femininity and masculinity. So instead of talking about gender, in a in a music audio spaces i would like to talk mm -hmm. about gen, uh, femininity and masculinity because someone yeah. who is a example cis male but extremely feminine mm -hmm. might not feel comfortable in the audio space they might feel exactly similar type of feelings of that they can't be themselves they need to constantly because it is a very masculine space generally it is mm -hmm. very competitive yes very um ju uh, judgmental and uh, technical skills Toxic. very demanding you're not sh you can't show vulnerability or weakness you need to constantly yeah. be strong and determined and very um pushy <laughs> in a sense yeah. uh, which are <laughs> often relate to masculine traits and if you are shy quiet sensitive if you don't take space if you don't demand space it's considered more feminine if you wear a dress you look feminine you wear makeup you wear uh you have a long hair da, 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 da. If, whether whatever gender you are whether you are trans you're non-binary whatever gender you are if you are more feminine you are not belong to that space and that's where you need to fight <laughs> constantly even just yeah. feeling, are you, are you safe? Is someone going to harm you? Did it, it like, it, it just, exactly. it's a constant thought process. So what, okay. So about future. <laughs> so, so to be able to have a world where gender doesn't matter, we would need to have spaces where we all feel comfortable and safe to be. And that's it. Mm. That's literally it. So that everybody could be as feminine, as masculine, uh, wear whatever they want, talk as where, how they want, act as they want, and they they are respected as they are. 
and they're judged by their actions and not by who they are, like as a gender or how they yeah. dress or blah blah blah. So, <laughs> but by what they do, to be, instead of what they yeah, are, exactly. And to be able to be in that point where still very, very, very far from that, because as someone who <clears throat> mm. I said I started educating, I started doing tutorials because there was nobody else. Literally, I think it was Laura Escude and Ro uh, Rachel K. Collier, uh, Mart Salongi, like some of the people that I were like before me in the industry that I saw as role models but I grew up like not knowing anyone who was a woman in audio and yes it is happening Same. but also what's happening now to me and I'm exactly what why I say that I'm a good example of this is because why I don't like saying that I'm an educator is because very often women take the role of the carer the mother, the educator, ah. the person who takes care of everybody else, but their own needs. So mm. what happens, why we are not on the top of the hundred percent, no, the top 50, top hundred tracks, why no women is literally almost anywhere ever as an engineers, as producers up there in the big studios is because we take care of everybody else's needs and we don't push ourselves up there into those lists. And that's what I realized that that's what I've been doing. I've been helping everybody else achieve their dreams instead of putting that time and that energy into pushing my own dreams instead of being and not being scared, but it's, it's also very scary to push yourself to go to those dreams because what yeah. that means is that it's terrifying. I need to expose myself to those spaces that are not safe. I need to expose myself mm. to those areas, to those internet communities, to those places where people will literally tear me in part be just because of my gender. And as someone yeah. who's done YouTube almost four years, I can say that there is a lot of bad people there who does, where gender does matter a lot. <laughs> where, yeah, if I push myself to be in the comments, yeah. So if I push myself to be as a producer, not as an educator, but as an artist on the top of the rankings of music industry, I'm gonna be absolutely slated for it. <laughs> but. Yeah, so it's scary. Right? <laughs> it's scary, but I have decided that that's what I'm going to focus this year is that I'm every YouTube content that happens is going to come through me as an artist and not me as a educating others. This is this year is like okay. I'm focusing fully on myself as an artist, as as a creator, the year and I of will LNA. let people and I will let people into my my artistry to have a look at it. So I will share, share what I do, but I will have, I will put time and effort to, to be the person that I wish I would have had, well, that I would have had like always in my, to look up to that. I want to, I, I can do that to myself. So why have I not done that before? It's because I'm scared and because I never thought I could be that person. Say, Elena, thank you for joining me at the Stella Sound podcast today, but before we thank go, you. I want to give you a chance to shout out any platforms or projects before we go. Remember to follow us on the Stellar Sound Discord community or head on over to our Instagram for the latest Stellar updates. But the floor is yours. Do you have any uh, platforms, projects, new singles coming out in February that you'd like to shout out? I do have a new single coming in in February. End of, I think it's 24th of February with a Ooh. music video. If you like No, I'll Do It, you might like this one. This is a bit of a more EDM banger. For, Ooh, for a couple of reasons. Exciting. There's the reasons why it's a very dancey, bit, quite commercially danceable, but it has a point. It why it it's great. I love <laughs> it. It's it's quite camp like. <laughs> it's Ooh. there's there's a reason. Oh, you, just, you anyway. You, I'm you, gonna, you're selling this. You're explain. selling this. I'm good. I'm ready for it. <laughs> it's very fabulous. Let's just say that way. Um, and uh -huh. also follow me on Instagram and all those because also I have my book coming out later this year um, most likely 
it's end of this year or early next year. I'm not 100% sure yet, but it will be coming out and it will help if you ever struggled with confidence, insecurities about your music and creativity and music production, then it will help. Ah, and all the secrets, all the secrets will lie in the well, book. Well, listeners and fellow astronauts out there, familiar and reporter, my guest, Ellen A. We want to thank you for joining us here at the Stellar Sound Podcast. But the countdown has been done and it's time to blast off into the stellar sphere. Remember to empower great musicians everywhere and we'll meet again at the next Stellar Radio.